Gigabyte has finally done it. I love the ease of use of this X870 Aorus Elite motherboard. A pretty bold statement, but I have a few good reasons for it. Let's break it down. We're now in the era of AMD's latest motherboard, and this one from Gigabyte is definitely worth a look. It's not part of the highest end X870E series, but still offers most of what you would need in the AM5 chipset board. The key differences are 8 fewer PC lanes on the chipset and a bit fewer high end USB ports, but we'll get into those details a bit later on. For now, let's check out what this board has to offer. Since AMD has confirmed that AM5 boards will be supported for at least another three years, you'll be able to use any CPUs from the 7000 series onwards, including the recently released 9000 series. This board features four DDR5 slots, supporting speeds of up to 8000 mega transfers per second when overclocked. However, keep in mind that these speeds might not be achievable for all chips. It really depends on your memory, CPU and motherboard combination. You can also load this board with up to 256 gigabytes of memory, which is pretty impressive for a standard desktop platform. For expansion, there is PCIe Gen 5x16 slot at the top of the board connected directly to the CPU, and two additional x16 sized slots below that connect to the chipset. The middle slot runs at PCIe Gen 4 by 4 lanes, while the bottom one is operating at PCIe Gen 3 by 2 lanes. Just know that the middle slot becomes unavailable if you're using the M.2D slot. Now let's talk about the M.2 slot. This board offers four of them, three running PC Gen 5 and one running PC Gen 4. The top slot is directly connected to the CPU without any compromises, while the bottom two connect to the CPU at four lanes each. The caveat here is the CPU only has 16 lanes available for the main PC expansion. Gigabyte has included a switch here. If you populate one or two of those drives, that will bring down the main expansion slot to run at 8 Gen 5 lanes, so keep that in mind. Next up is USB port. On the internal side, there is a USB Type-C header supporting 20 gigabits and USB Type-A header offering 5 gigabits. You'll also find a few USB 2.0 headers at the bottom for additional connectivity. On the back panel, there is a solid array of USB ports. There are two high-end USB 4 Type-C ports, which can support 40 gigabit speeds, and you can also use them with monitors via DP Alt mode. Below those, there are two red USB Type A ports running at 10 gigabit speed, and blue ports offer 5 gigabit speeds. Finally, if you need them, there are four slower USB 2.0 ports available. For networking, the board features 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port at the bottom and Wi Fi 7 antenna port at the top. I really like the antenna setup since it's really easy to click into place. Additionally, there are some basic audio ports at the bottom for those who need them. When it comes to building the system, this board really shines. It offers 8 fan headers, 4 RGB headers and 2 temperature sensor headers, making it a breeze to set up cooling and lighting. There are also a great set of troubleshooting tools, including power and reset buttons at the top and debug LEDs. One of the standout features though is its mostly toolless installation of M.2 heatsinks and drives. Gigabyte has designed the M.2 heatsinks to be easily removed without dealing with the fiddly screws, allowing for a quick and simple installation of your drives. This applies to both the main drive and the three additional M.2 slots at the bottom. Additionally, the GPU mount features a convenient side button for easy card removal. This is really handy for those who want to remove the card without fiddling around with something thin to release the PC retention clip. One of the less important headers that I missed earlier is the internal HDMI connector for the sensor panel link. For those interested in installing an internal system monitor to display all your stats, you can utilize this port. Overall, this motherboard covers most use cases with plenty of expansion options even considering that it is the cut down version due to the limitation of the missing E in the name. But it only makes me question it all. Do you even need the latest generation if all the existing boards already support the new CPUs? Even with the release of the 9000 series, MD's own testing was conducted on the X670E boards, making the answer somewhat unclear. If you need the latest USB 4 and Wi-Fi 7, then the newer boards might be worth considering. However, if you don't need those or want to save some money, opting for a high-end large gen board might offer a nearly the same performance at lower cost. What are your thoughts on these new boards? Are you planning to buy the 800 series or stick with the 600 series for now? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one.